everyone. Welcome back. Chapter 10. We're going to be looking at differential analysis and product pricing. All right, so what is differential analysis? It's going to be choosing between alternative courses of action. So what does that mean? It means that in business, you're going to have to make decisions. Does it make more sense to invest money on a new machine or is it make more, does it make more sense to keep the old machine and just repair it? Well, that's a differential analysis because what you're doing is you're comparing two alternative courses of action. So we're going to be going through a bunch of different examples. Um, we're obviously focusing on the numbers here because that's what we do. We're accountants. But, I mean, we are focusing on the objective financial side of things. You know, are there considerations beyond financial? Of course there are. Right. Like maybe you're just tired of repairing the old machine or something like that. And you or you're tired of dealing with the warranty company. and You just want to buy something new. Well, that's a consideration, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the numbers, because when we're making these decisions, they come, you know, the people in management, the people in charge are going to come to us and say, show me the numbers. Does it make sense to keep this piece of equipment or does it make sense for us to turn around and, and buy a new one and dispose of the old one for scrap value? Okay, so that's our job is to come up with those calculations. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through um, maybe four or five different kinds of examples of differential analysis that are very common in business. All right, so some terminology here. We've got differential revenue and differential cost, right? Differential revenue is going to be the increase or decrease in revenue that is expected from a course of action compared to an alternative. Basically, will we get what's our revenue look like if we take this alternative? What's our revenue look like if we take that alternative? Same idea for differential cost. Oh, I did the same thing you guys. I forgot to turn off the little, hang on a second. I'm going to turn off my, um, I'm going to turn off my, my paragraph marks. Okay. I did that to you before, so I wanted to fix it. Um, now you see too much of the screen. Okay. Back to this. Differential cost. What are the costs if I go with one alternative versus another, right? And the differential income or loss is going to be those two pieces together, right? Revenue minus cost of one alternative, revenue minus cost of the second alternative. All right, so take a second, get those notes down, but I'm going to keep talking. All right, a couple more terms that you're going to hear and you hear very often in managerial accounting are something called a sunk cost. Um, as well as opportunity cost. What is a sunk cost? Well, a cost is a, is, a, is something you paid already in the past. It's not relevant to the current decision making. Um, and I'll give you an example. The ex an example is, let's say I've got a car and I just put like $2,000 into this car, updating it, right? Getting, putting a new engine in or something like that, right? Something significant. Well, it doesn't have to be significant, but let's say it's a significant. So I put $2,000 into the car a couple of months ago, and now the brakes are going bad. Do I fix the brakes? Well, my human brain says, well, I just put $2,000 into that car like a couple of months ago. So of course I'm going to spend the extra money to, um, to, add, to update the brakes. Well, maybe not. All right, that's considered a sunk cost. Those, the original $2,000 that you put in to fix that car, that's a past expense. We already spent that money. It's gone. What I need to consider going forward is, do I want to spend the $500 or however much it would be to put new brakes on the car? That's the decision I have to make today. So I have to look from this point forward. Do I want to spend money on something? I am not to consider costs that were in the past as part of my current peer, my current decision making. All right, a sunk cost is one that you already, already put money into and that's that. All right, Oppert I know it's hard to like, it's hard to get your brain around the idea of abandoning the costs of money you already spent on something, but that's, that's how you're supposed to look at things. Okay, opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is what have you lost by taking one investment versus another? So let's just really simply, let's say that I decided I was going to buy a new car right? My business needs a new car. I'm going to buy a new car. And I put, you know, I paid for the whole car, $20,000. Well, if I hadn't have bought that new car, what could I have done with that $20,000? That's the opportunity cost. What did I lose by putting, by choosing one alternative? Maybe I just could have put that money into the stock market and I could have earned 10%. Well, that's the opportunity cost. I lost the chance to do something else with that money, right? It's just a, it's a consideration overall. All right. All right, so let's look at our first type of differential analysis, to lease or to sell. 
All right, office space with a cost of $100,000, accumulated depreciation of $30,000, can be sold for $150,000, less a 6% broker commission. Alternatively, the office space can be leased for 10 years for a total of 170, at the end of which there's no salvage value. All right, in addition, if we lease it, we have repairs, insurance, property taxes on the office space, that'll be $24,000. So which way do we go? It says determine the differential income or loss from the lease over the alternative. Okay, so the question is to lease or to sell, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up just that way. Lease or sell. Okay. Hang on just a second. Okay, well, my video is flashing at me, but I guess I'm going to keep going. <laughs> okay. Now let's look at the top part here for just a second. Office space with a cost of $100,000 and accumulated depreciation of $30,000. Should I be taking those into consideration, you think? Well, the answer is going to be no. Because what these are is their, uh, their sunk costs, right? Their costs, their money I've spent in the past. I, I bought this for $100,000 at some point, and I depreciated $30,000 worth, so really the book value is $70,000 to me. Okay, that's important. Don't be wrong, and it's important to the accountant because then you're dealing with a gain or a loss and that kind of stuff. But that's not the decision we're making today, and that's not what we're doing at the differential analysis. What we're trying to decide is which is a better financial financial decision to make from today going forward. So I'm not supposed to consider costs that are in the past. All right, so Cengage has this setup maybe a lot more complicated than what I'm going to show you, but this is the basics of it. The idea is what we're going to do is we're going to look at the differential revenue and we're going to look at the differential costs of each alternative. All right, so if I were to lease this thing, this space, this office space, it says I could lease it for a total of 10 years for $170,000, at the end of which there's no salvage value, okay? But with that $170,000, I would have to pay all the costs of maintaining it. So you're looking at $24,000 in costs there. So net I would make $146,000 from the lease. Okay, great. Now let's look at the sale. Well, if I sell, sell it, my revenue is going to be $150,000. The cost is going to be, it looks like a 6% broker's commission, right? So I'm going to pay 6% of $150,000, which multiply those together, and you're looking at $9,000 in costs. Okay, so that's $150,000 times 6%. That's where that's coming from. Ooh, that's supposed to be an arrow. All right, so in total, if we, set, if we subtract this differential income from each alternative is 146000 for lease and 141000 for sale. So this is my better choice from a financial standpoint is to lease it. All right, I'm making more money. That's what we're doing here. Now, are there other considerations? Of course there are, right? Do I want to lease it? Do I want to deal with renting property? I mean, maybe I just want to be rid of this thing. Maybe the neighborhood's not so good, <laughs> right? Lots of things. But our focus today and what we're doing here is we're focusing on the numbers. Okay, so I'm going to pause this. I'll be right back.